We're ready. We're filming. We're recording. We're doing it. Welcome back to Talkville. Uh, this is exciting. This I don't know why this is exciting, but uh, it is exciting. I guess you'll find out because uh, I think our lead guest star, Tom, had a, uh, you know, he was, uh, and we were all enamored by her. Let's just say it. She was uh, We so got along well. We got along yes. well. Yes. Uh, the ultimate Smallville rewatch podcast. Every week we go back, we watch the episodes, and... Um, Sometimes we're like, oh, that was pretty good. I'm proud to be on that show. And sometimes we're like, well, you know, it was, you know, okay. And every once in a while we <laughs> have episodes we don't like. But that is normal when you do 22 episodes. Um, no, you're always proud. You're always proud to be a part of it. That's true. You're always had proud you, to be a part had, of it. Had you been there more often, you may have had more an effect on the scenes you're not in. You know I what? I could see that. You'd, you'd have been a great producer on the show, but that meant that would have meant you had to be there all the time. Yeah. Yeah, I, I tend to only want to be really involved on certain things when they're my own or I have uh, a, like a uh, co-creator or if I was an executive producer, yeah, I, I think I would be more um, apt to be invested. Uh, right. But at, my, at this stage in my life, I just sort of like, if I'm going to do a show, I'm either going to executive produce it and you know hopefully create it maybe write on it but i don't want to really necessarily do both just do well one, no you know? wonder they didn't no wonder they didn't invite you you were like hey listen i just want to act executive produce and write <laughs> well that's what i'm doing right now i'm trying to that's it you know we can't write because of the strike but um you know i have thoughts yeah. that go on very deep deep thoughts ryan ryan Tez is here I am here, and you're going to keep Mr. checking Ryan? my camera to make sure I'm in focus because no, someone, someone got in your head. I'm actually not getting looking. I'm just looking to see how comfortable you look in that chair. I'm getting the couch. there. I'm trying to like. Yeah, you'll 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 get there. All right. Uh, our also, socials. Just, what? Sorry, just just real quick before there? I forget. We're all over the place. What the hell is that? That is. Oh my lord! Did I Leanne make that for too. you? You're exactly right. <laughs> I was like, that is a Leanne. Oh man, she went she went nuts on that one. That's a good one. Look at that. You put it on your for Tom to bring something home and put it on his counter, he never brings stuff back. No, I don't. You don't, man. You're like, Do you want this? I'm like, I can't have two of those. I can't even fit them in my fit them in them. In my, fit them, in them, in them. All right. If you want to uh, support us, and it's so important that, you know, if you like a lot of people just listen, and that's fine. Thank you. If you want to write a review, it helps us. It truly helps us on Apple or wherever you, mostly Apple, if you want to do that for the algorithm of, of the podcast, and they'll, we'll go up and we'll, be, we'll chart. And um, if you want to support the podcast in extra ways, it's Patreon. Patreon is the reason we are going. P A T R E O N dot com slash talkville. Um, support us today and um there's a lot of perks and a lot of fun and you get your name shouted out at the end of every episode if you're a top tier and other stuff in fact we're doing zooms today with uh a lot of folks i don't know why i said that but we're doing some zooms so you the can end's gonna be there too yeah you, yeah you can go to talkvillepodcast.com and get a zoom we only do them once every three or four months for like an hour block so that block's been full so we're doing i think eight and then we're done for four months so get on that, talkvillepodcast.com, a ton of other great merch. The Inside of You online store has great merch like this jacket and sun, new sunspin hats. Should I send you one, Tom? Will you wear it? Look. Oh, no, that's not my sunspin hat. That's a dog park hat. Never mind. I was going to say, it looks a lot different Never than mind. sunspin. Never mind. All right, at Talkville. If you, if you, what were you say? If you send it and, it and it fits, I'll wear it. All right. I'll send it. I'll send it. All right, what are our socials, Ryan? At Talkville Podcast. That sounds right. On just about yeah. everything, <laughs> most of it. I think that's right. And uh, you can always go to uh, at the Michael Rosenbaum on Instagram in the link tree, and it says all the events we're doing. Tom and I are going to tons of cons. All right. Without further ado, let's get into it. Season three, episode fourteen. This is obsession. You are my obsession. 
Uh, titled Obsession aired February 18th, 2004, just four days after uh, Valentine's Day. Not re- No reason I said that. Mm-hmm. Director is James no. Marshall. Writer is Holly Harold. Two episodes in the season, Magnetic and Obsession. I liked Holly. Ian Summerholder is Adam Knight. Sarah Carter, oof, as Alicia Baker. Linda Boyd is Mrs. Baker in Netflix's Virgin River with Annette O'Toole, by the way. Paula Perry is John Baker. Francois Yip as Dr. Leah Tang. And Camille Mitchell as Sheriff Nancy Adams. The synopsis, great news. Clark finds an attractive girl with superpowers who's willing to keep his secret. Bad news, she's crazy and wants to erase his past. <laughs> um, I will say this. I, I remember... It was truly one of the only times I ever felt this way. But I remember this actress, Sarah Carter. Sarah Carter. Or is it Sarah Connor? It it sounds close enough. Where that, Sarah that bit Carter. Works, that I accept the bit. Okay, thank you. <laughs> but, you know, when she walked on set, I was just like, my jaw dropped. I was like, she was just, oh. I don't know what it was. Just beautiful inside out. Her personality was awesome. I mean, she had this great energy about her. I was just like, oh my gosh. Holy I mean, crap. she was, her and I got along really well. I'll be honest with you and say, I felt like the biggest dork in front of her. Like, I, I just felt like I, I, I was pretty. That. I felt like I, I just, but she, and I've seen, I've seen Sarah since. She came in with just, her own playfulness and her own sort of thing. There wasn't drama. There, the, she just played the character, and she was just very uh, interesting. And at the beginning, it doesn't seem like she has this big agenda, especially in the elevator and whatnot. But it was so refreshing to see Clark use his powers in front of someone, yeah. and her being like, "Oh, I got you too." And so immediately, you're like, "Wait, Clark may have found someone." And then of. You know, you have to finish the episode to see that things may not go the way you think they're going to go. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, you were attracted to her too, Ryan. Uh, I don't see it in the episode. Yes. Yes, you were. <laughs> the episode begins in Metropolis inside Luther Corp. As Lionel speaks to a field trip of students from Smallville High. I guess he's got time to do that, including Chloe, who he, he's had a lot of, uh, let's say, just a tumultuous relationship with. The girl that has fired and who he has fired and whose father he has fired as the group moves on through luther corp clark and chloe get separated by their teacher forcing clark to take an elevator with fellow classmate alicia baker someone we've never seen we always have these new students who happen to happen to be there a long period of time but yeah. they're students and they all have dark secrets and it's it's a professional environment i love that moment in be- before the elevator when they're both trying to look at each other but not look at each other mm-hmm. i thought that was a nice moment. that's a and that's a james marshall moment if you, you know what i mean yeah. James likes to capture the little moments, uh, which sometimes when you're working with him, James, if you're hearing this, you hate. But then when you watch the episode, you're like, good one. Nice move. Yeah. Yep. As they make their way down, the elevator malfunction sends them into a free fall. Alicia begins to panic. Clark is forced to use his powers. He uses heat vision to take out the security camera. But wouldn't the security camera see him doing the heat vision? No, it's too fast. I mean, the all last of a sudden, thing we the saw camera's was looking this... at you, and then it just goes. Yeah. All right. I'll, I'll I'll buy that. He busts through the side of the elevator door so he could grip a pole <laughs> to slow them down before they crash. That was just weird. <laughs> do, you a, do you have a new Do you have a new T-shirt idea? New T-shirt idea? Gripping the pole. <laughs> Topville gripping the pole. Since he showed her his. She decides to show him hers. Alicia grabs Clark and they teleport out of the elevator before Luther Corp. Security can catch them. Tom, any fond memories filming this elevator scene? Yeah, I do recall when Clark uses his heat vision, reaches through, which looks like, like when he reaches through the elevator, nothing really breaks. You just see his hand. Like It's almost like he, his arm magically goes past the elevator to grab the yeah. pole. Like there's no like, it doesn't break the elevator and it would have. And I do remember when then she goes, well, let's just teleport. I remember being like, just right before the break, you'll see it in my eyes. I'm like, well, why didn't you just do the, 
why didn't you just do that from the beginning? Yeah. Would you, were, were you, what were you waiting for? Yeah. Well, why didn't you do your but, trick? She was like, I was going to do it, but then I was going to let you die and do it last second. So you wouldn't see my power or something. I don't know. Or just, yeah, that was weird. The next day, Clark catches up with Alicia and they flirt about knowing each other's powers. Alicia tells him this is why she comes off snobby and that her powers came from the meteor shower. Over at the town, Lana walks into the loft to snoop into Adam's belongings to try and figure out what's up with that guy. As she reads the journal entries about herself and Clark, Adam startles her. She tells him to leave and Adam threatens to be a squatter. <laughs> Was there anything creepy about the fact that he just kept it, kept walking toward her? Like, no, like yeah. nothing. It's just, he's, he just he's kept been closing creepy in. the whole series. So, I mean, the whole arc. <laughs> he's been creepy. He was nice in that first scene, but there was... Then after that, it just kind of got like, how many times did he block her in the apartment or say, get out or this? Or It just seemed like... Yeah. I was like, I was over this storyline. Were you, Ryan? I mean, there's a reason for it. And we're going to find out why. Yeah, but I was just over it. I was over but the storyline. We knew that was going to happen. We knew that some I mean, shady it, look, ass shit was in, going down. Yeah, I guess we did. And in in watching this episode, it's both Car- Clark and Lana both meeting people who may be the answer to what they've been looking for and finding out maybe not so much. Mm. Mm. Back at school, Clark meets up with Alicia in the physics club. You know, back to school. Uh, she school. asks him out and makes him giddy, which Tom's giddiness certainly uh, pushed through in some of these scenes. He looks such a little nerd. I love that. He's just like, oh, you know how to look. I think you were giddy just from her. You had an affair with her. I, you, I you mean, had an affair. yeah. You had an affair with her, yeah. didn't you? Absolutely not. No. I know you wouldn't. You're no. a good guy. You would never do that. I no. know, man. Uh, but consider it. <laughs> No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. <laughs> I mean, but I was single. You weren't. You were married and you were very Listen, it's a lot of fun. It, listen, this is a perfect example. When you get an actor, and, and all actors are fun. Don't get me wrong, especially if they're willing to and they want to be there in a scene. Then the energy is a lot of fun. When you get someone who also is like playful and like the, 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 the storylines also overlap, it's awesome, man. When you can connect with another actor, it's fun. It is it's fun. It's a great time. You're right. You like yeah. look forward to coming to work to enjoy it. Uh, yeah. The excitement is short-lived uh, when she asks him out uh, because Lana brings him back to reality when she shares Adam's journal journaling with Clark. And as Alicia passes them in the hall, Clark gets defensive. That night, Clark invites Alicia back to his loft to gaze at the stars. And after telling her she doesn't look like a science geek, Alicia tries to figure out how he can do the things he does. Clark drives her back home to end the date as we hear one thing by Finger Eleven. I caught that too. Thanks, Bryce. I don't get it. <laughs> that's the band. That's the song. What What about it? It's just, It was really famous at the time. So it was? That, that was a big get. That was a lot of money. Oh. They share an almost <laughs> there you go, good, line producer. good night kiss. Everything seems <laughs> to be going perfect. Too perfect. <laughs> Late that night as Clark is sleeping, he's startled awake by the ultimate teenage boy fantasy as Alicia teleports into his bed to pick up where they left off. Holy cowabunga, man. Unfortunately, they don't get too far as Jonathan's Jonathan cock blocks his son by walking into his room unannounced and finding Clark being straddled. That was... So I, I, I t- striking it was striking it was like that depeche <laughs> mode not to sound like a pervert but like i just can't get enough i just can't get enough <laughs> i'm going crazy and i can't uh, uh, and alicia is just not i don't know i, I mean they never well, it also that. felt like that on the day like don't get me wrong and i'm telling you when jonathan opens up the door so i think i think marshall did this on purpose like Sarah and I were doing the scene, whatever. And he goes, and then John's going to come in, but we're going to focus on you and Alicia. We're going to get all these shots first. Right. But they were really and in so, Jonathan. So Jonathan didn't like walk in on every part. Marshall would just say cut when Jonathan would come in. So then finally, when Jonathan came in, he basically kicked the door in, and I didn't like, I didn't seen John. You know what I mean? It was a severe interruption. And I think Marshall did that on purpose. Oh and yeah. So that reaction you see, Neither Sarah or I had seen John, John. And so when he when he comes in and he shot us first, we were we're both caught as characters. Yeah, that you know was I mean? great. That response was look, great. And the look on Jonathan's face, dude, I actually felt bad. <laughs> like 
I was it like, was what, really what good. I, so that was. I was hoping though. I was hoping that Jonathan would have kind of like, Clark, we need to talk. And then as he left, the door closes. He goes, my boy. <laughs> he was a little too angry with you about hooking up with a hottie. Talkville is brought to you by AG1. We talk about this all the time, this product, how much we love it. Um, AG1 is the daily foundational nutrition supplement that supports whole body health. I drink it literally every day. It's so easy. You just put it in some water, shake it up. It dissolves really simple. I actually take my first thing in the morning, um, even before coffee. Um, it sits good in your stomach. You feel energized. You, you feel like you accomplished something, that you got it all out of the way. And you can carry on your day. Yeah, you don't have to take all these pills every day and these supplements when you can just put some powder and some cold water, stir it up, and boom, drink it, go about your day. Every scoop is packed with 75 vitamins, minerals, probiotics, uh, whole food sourced ingredients of high quality that give me major benefits like gut and mood support, boosted energy, and even healthier looking skin, hair, and nails. AG1 is raising the standard for quality in the supplement category. AG1 helps you build your health foundation first and i love the travel packs you get travel packs that can you bring with you we go to conventions we sign autographs we need energy we need to feel good and uh it's so convenient my ag1 is delivered to me every month so it's super easy to make it a daily habit if you want to take ownership of your health try ag1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin d and five free ag1 travel packs with your first purchase go to drink ag1.com slash talkville that's drink ag1.com slash talkville check it out talkville is brought to you by zoc doc zoc doc i don't know if you're like me but every time you have something going on with you you're like i gotta go online and go down these rabbit holes these wormholes of all the things that can treat this issue or and then you scare the crap out of yourself you're talking well, that's true because i've walked up to you before and be like what's that on your face and you're like what what is it what is it what I better go look. I better go look online. No, 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 no. There are people out there. There are actually doctors who can help you. So you're not going down these rabbit holes, not second guessing yourself or thinking about, you know, you're dying or whatever. Zoc doc. Um, look, this is the place to go. You find expert doctors, medical professionals that specialize in the care you need and deliver the type of experience you want. ZocDoc is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient reviewed, take your insurance, are available when you need them, and treat almost every condition under the sun. You know how many times I thought I had a, a tumor or, oh, there's this lump here. And then you go, I'm dying. Within two hours, you think it's the end of the world. You get clammy and numb, and you're just like, what is going on with me? And then you go to a doctor or you go to ZocDoc, and you could find out soon, fast what's going on and not and, and just settle your your worries well and they're there to listen to you and pay attention to you which i think is a big a big thing too on ZocDoc, finding the doctor that's right for you is seamless the quality care you need is just a few taps away in the zoc doc app and when you find the right doctor you can feel it you feel heard and at ease on zoc doc you'll find quality doctors who focus on you listen to you and prioritize your care Millions of people use ZocDoc's free app to find and book a doctor in their neighborhood who is patient-reviewed and fits their needs and schedule just right. ZocDoc, the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance, are available when you need them, and treat almost every condition under the sun. Go to ZocDoc.com slash Talkville and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash Talkville. ZocDoc.com slash Talkville. You know, there's nothing worse than going to the doctor um, and you expect that you're going to be the center of attention because you're the patient. But then you're in there and you realize he's got all these other appointments and they don't have a lot of things that they, you know, they don't want to stay in the room. They have other people to see. So they give you like 10 minutes maybe before they have to leave the room. I hate that. I want their undivided attention. I want to feel important. And ZocDoc makes me feel that way. I could find a doctor that I feel comfortable with, at ease with, and it's so simple. It's a free app. ZocDoc.com slash Talkville. This next scene, and we're talking about her, it's cool that they they wrote it in a way where she could oh, enjoy. Yeah. yeah. 
Clark walks downstairs, tries to explain his new relationship to his parents, including the fact that Alicia has powers and knows that he does too. Martha and Jonathan are upset that Clark would share his secret. He says he feels connected because she was willing to risk her own secret to keep his. And uh, yeah, I really like that, that she could hear that stuff. She heard about the kryptonite yeah. and all that shit. The next day at school, Clark arrives to find that Alicia is already gossiping about what happened the night before and has also decorated his locker, turning it into a shrine for her. Clark gets a little spooked and tells her they need boundaries. She doesn't think so. 21 <laughs> minutes in, we get a Lex appearance. Hmm. I had a nice vacation. Clark goes yeah, to his friend time. for relationship advice, knowing he has a knack for crazy relationships with women. However, Clark can't really share the intricacies of their super relationship. Clark leaves and goes to Alicia's house where he is greeted by her parents. Clark tries to tell them that Alicia is moving too fast and getting the wrong idea, but they are persistent in telling him to go along with it for the love of God. Before Clark leaves, Alicia's father warns him to be careful because of what happened to her previous boyfriend. Unknowingly, Alicia was behind the door and could hear the whole thing. She hears everything. She doesn't need super hearing. She just needs to pay attention. Like she hears everything. She's good. She hears everything. Oh, and we breezed right through Pete's only scene in the entire episode. Oh, yeah. What was he in? He oh, just, sorry. He, it he was comes fun to give, see like, Pete. Clark, like, he's just like, yeah, man, great. And then he leaves. That's it? He's like, yeah, dude, everyone knows. All right, peace. That's it. <laughs> he just Michael Bolton. After having like a whole featured episode, like, it's a bummer. But yeah. Yeah, that's, that's weird, man. How they don't continue it, on that friendship thing a little bit. Uh -huh. And they just go right to yeah, this but one. It's, but, it, but again, it's exactly what Clark needs at that moment. You know, it's like, yeah, hey, man, you, Clark's like, somebody finally knows who I am. They like it. They understand it. I'm, I'm embarrassed to tell people. And then Pete's like, dude, yeah. And he's like, cool. And then he opens his locker and it's like psycho. Jesus. Back at the talent, Lana sees, uh, seeks help from Lex to get rid of Adam. Lex makes the comment that there are ways of getting rid of someone a lot faster than eviction. That's for sure. You can't really evict somebody. They'll just squat in your... Yeah. Clark arrives back home to find his loft decorated with more pictures of Alicia Alicia and his yearbook defaced. Alicia drew o all over Lana's face and tell him he needs to forget about her because they're meant to be together. Mid-conversation, she gets a call that her father has, been, has fallen down the stairs. Hmm. Uh -huh. They head to the hospital and the sheriff asks Alicia, Hey, uh, could someone want him hurt? Because there was blunt trauma to the head. Clark accuses her of being involved. She tells him that she did it for them. Before Clark can get her to the, tell the sheriff, she teleports away. I thought she did a great job in the hallway with the sheriff of looking. <clears throat> yeah, her tears like, were like, it was good. Yeah, she, she nailed it. She nailed it. She did a really good job. And then you get Clark kind of, you get Clark kind of like, yeah, but I mean, let's put this together. There's. Uh, I should have got her on this episode, but then I don't think we would have talked so frankly about how much we loved her. <laughs> We've been like, That's true. The good news is because of the success of this episode, you may not know this, but she comes back. There's another episode that Sarah comes back. Really? Yep. Well, and it's hot a good damn. One. So maybe we'll have her back on that one. All right. Clark heads back home and finds Alicia in the kitchen. Alicia getting intel on his family and using them to threaten Clark to stay with her. Clark doesn't give in. Clark heads to the torch to share what's been going on with Alicia. Chloe suggests that her one weakness is Clark. This triggers an idea, and Clark hatches a plan to take her down. Chloe heads to the Baker home and tells Alicia that the sheriff suggests Clark is involved in the accident. Chloe tells Alicia that she is Clark's only chance in proving his innocence and needs to see her. Allison did a great job of lying convincingly here. There's one point where she kind of like looks to the side for the audience, but then the rest of it is like, she's emotional. She sells it. I mean, she's one of our great, I mean, yeah, you have a lot of great actors on the show. Allison could always do it. She could always turn it up. Alicia goes to meet Clark in an old warehouse, which seems a lot like Luther Corp. He tries to get her to come clean, but she resists, telling him that they'll just run away together. Clark takes her into a separate room with lead paint, rendering her powers useless. But luckily, she's able to get away when she pulls a piece of kryptonite from her bag. Weakening Clark, she gives him a kiss and then leaves before the cops can get there. After no. that, Alicia heads to the Talon to take out Lana so she and Clark can finally be together. 
She corners her in the alley and pulls out a giant butcher knife that looks incredibly fake. That could not look any <laughs> worse. The prop <laughs> department, I love you guys, but what the F? That looked like it was just a piece of aluminum, not even aluminum foil. <laughs> looked like just, it was crap. I was also waiting for Lana to like pull out some of those moves a couple episodes ago when her and Chloe fought on the steps. I was waiting for Lana to do like a roundhouse kick and just like <laughs> completely take her out. You know what I mean? That would have been dope. Lana runs inside, but Alicia teleports to stop her. Alicia goes into a psycho monologue and then throws Lana into a wall, knocking her out for the how many of time? Before Alicia Baker is able to go Norman Bates, Clark escapes by kicking the lead paint over the kryptonite and reducing its effect. He then supersedes to the talon, throws a bucket of paint at her, using his heat vision to explode the bucket, turning the place into a scene from Carrie. Oh, They're yeah. all going to laugh at you. Or laugh at me. Alicia tries to teleport away, but because the paint is lead, she is unable to. I don't think there's any comment of what happens to Alicia at all. No asylum, no arrest, or anything. Well, she just is covered in paint, which was annoying. No one, no one was pissed about that. Like, well, I mean, you're, I mean, you're right. I mean, that's the thing. That's, nothing really comes about it. I know she comes back for another episode, but I can't recall why or how. Uh, maybe Clark helped her. Yeah, I don't know. Perhaps. After yet just, another you know, Clark-related near-death experience, Lana goes to talk with him the next day. She's pretty upset when she tells Clark that Alicia bragged about knowing certain things about Clark that he wouldn't share with anyone else. Well. Lana leaves, and Martha tries to console her, telling him that someday he will find the right person and that there's no one like him out there. Later that night, Lana returns to the town, overjoyed that Adam's gone. She tries thinking about what Lex said. She tries thanking Lex, but he says he had no hand in doing this, and his security hasn't been able to track Adam down. What we, security? Yeah, my shitty security. Sorry. We then cut <laughs> to a scene with Adam tied to a chair, Lionel poking and prodding at him. Turns out Lionel arranged for Adam to live in Smallville to get close to Lionel Lang in order to feed him information about his peers. Before Lionel leaves, he tells Dr. Tang that Adam is no longer a participant in the clinical trial that is feeding him the drugs he needs to stay alive. I think the worst part about that scene, from in a, in a good way, is you find him there and you're like, oh, that must be horrible. Like he's there. And then Lionel walks in. We have this conversation and Lionel walks and just turns out the lights, like just leaves him there. <laughs> to me, that was terrifying. It's one thing to be there and tied down, but then to be left there completely alone in the dark, that would drive I, me crazy. I personally feel differently. I think that wasn't the, the creepiest, scariest way to end that episode. What, I think what was your I, didn't, I didn't so like that there was like almost like a library setting in terms of like this narrow hallway that was all bunched up with stuff and he was at the end of it. It should have been a, a very empty, cold room nothing around it Sorry. and the camera should have been and, and you know when he's sitting there begging please please and, and lionel looks at him i almost well it's the same in asylum when you were there maybe it was asylum of the one before when they had lex in that white stark sort of room with the double side mirror it could have been that room you know it would have been cooler i wish i was in the writer's room so as so Lionel is sitting there and he's asking for the injection, Adam wants the injection. It keeps him alive, right? Finally, Puts himself. he looks, no, he looks at Dr. Tang and he says, it's my dog's toy. And he looks at Dr. Tang and he says, after Adam's begging relentlessly, he says, give it to him. And he leaves and then she injects, injects something and then she leaves and he goes, wait, <gasps> Uh, and then poosh, lights go out that is freaking cooler man that's dark that's pretty cool um that's true all right look interesting things of note interesting things as adam of informs note. lana it is indeed difficult to evict someone it's also illegal for landlords to enter rented apartments without permission the season three dvd contains a deleted scene in which a pair of luther corp henchmen abduct adam knight by shooting him with a tranquilizer gun in the talon lex tells lana believe me there are definitely ways of getting rid of someone a lot faster than that when he says that a winged wall decoration is directly behind his head resembling devil's horns Ooh, ah, i didn't notice cool. that ironic 
don't you think? It's like rain. Sorry, side note, but did the did how was the makeup in this episode, Michael? Did anything bump for you? <laughs> I didn't like my makeup in one episode, but the rest of it was good. I didn't know it. It didn't jump out at me. Everybody... I forgot about that. It was just that episode. I thought everybody looked really like handsome and pretty. Yeah, I thought it looked really good this episode. Mostly it does. It was just that episode I noticed bad makeup. <laughs> and you know what? It could have been bad lighting. It was a different DP. It could have just been bad light or not or sometimes it's hard to light a certain room. I don't I don't know. All I'm going to say is it, well, I noticed it. You know from working with Natalie she, cuz she was a master at this. She's meticulous. She would she would consider who the DP was and she would change what she was doing. Yes. It was you know, easier for say, her to Barry adapt uses to someone bright, else. Brighter bluish lights, so we're going to make you yep. a little more green. Yep, <laughs> or whatever. Um, yeah. All right. Now it is time for the hotline. Talk. Get your questions hotline. in two one three Jet Q J E T C U T E. Make them short if you can. Uh, we're going to start with our top tier patron privilege. This is Garrett W. Garrett, what do you got for us? Hey there, this is Gear from Wisconsin. Uh, my question is for the episode Obsession, Tom. You had amazing chemistry with Sarah Carter, who plays Alicia. Uh, was that natural, or did you have to be part of her auditioning process? Because your chemistry was fire. So, thanks. Yeah, we all noticed. Um, I was not a part of the auditioning process. I, I don't know the story of how she became to be a part of Smallville, but I know that her and I got along very quickly and very easily. We just really enjoyed the playfulness of um, especially what the what the characters are doing. And we just had a good time together. Yeah. Hey, it's Thomas the Leaf Blower with a question for the season three episode Obsession. I was wondering, Tom, do you remember how you did that uh, punching your fist through the wall of the elevator scene? Nice short question. Uh quick answer, no. It looked a little it looked a little cheesy to me. It was probably just blue screen or, or green screen, because they had blue screen just, then it, too, where you just put yeah. your hand there and they combine that yeah. and make it look like your hands through something it's probably pretty easy it's probably an easy shot it's just i thought it was more i thought it was not really a smallville thing i think a smallville thing is you show the arm going through and you see the destruction on the elevator wall as it's as it's i'm i'm not going to use my hand to, to show you yeah please um, don't please don't that was <laughs> weird um, all hey, right. it's Dylan from Dallas. Obsession ends with Alicia Baker knowing Clark's secret, which as we all know is usually a death sentence. However, a few guest characters have managed to survive after learning about Clark that could easily say, damn, I know who that is. My question is, would you be down to keep track of <laughs> characters that learn Clark's secret and live? So far, we're at nine. Yeah. Kyle Tippett from Hug, Eric Summers from Leech, Justin Gaines from Crush, Ian Randall from Dichotic, the three kryptonite juicers from Witness, Van McNulty from Extinction, and now Alicia Baker from Obsession. And Bryce, forgive me for making your job a little bit harder. Thanks, guys. Right, that's a that's a Bryce wow. question. Bryce, if you want to jump in here, are you willing to do that? No, I don't think Bryce wants to do that. Bryce, you do whatever you want. But that's nine people who know his secret. Did, did they count Pete? Did he say Pete? Oh. And Martha and Jonathan? Or are these guest characters? I think he, I think he probably meant guest because that's easy. Yeah. I wonder. I wonder. Hmm. I wonder. Hmm. Okay, here we go. Some voicemails. Here's Johnny Boy. John, what did you got? Hey, this is John from Seattle, Washington. Obviously, Alicia at the time, I remember when, it, when the show came out, uh, her character was huge, even though she's only in only around three episodes. Uh, after the date, Clark, uh, you have a little trip downstairs. So, Tom, do you remember if that was intentional or not? It seems pretty natural. Thanks, guys. I think it was natural. It looked, it looked like you accidentally tripped or whatever. It was kind of cool. I tried to do that. I tried to add that in there to show that I was nervous around her. Yeah. It wasn't an, an actual trip and it wasn't written. That was just me act, trying to act. I love it. And I and if you if you see the look on her face, because she knows it's not written. It was just like me trying to get her attention. Yeah. Yeah, it was dope. Season three, episode 14 finale was giving me some serious saw vibes. Anyway, this is Carter K from Farmington, Missouri. And my question is about your thoughts on Lionel to this point. One minute I think he's evil, and the next I think he's too crazy to see what he does as being evil. Is he a crazy genius or an evil genius? John Glover is always keeping me on my toes throughout these episodes. Thanks, Team Talkville. If I was watching this, I would be like, uh, this guy is a sociopath, psychopath. Uh, he is a master manipulator. Um, you know, I think he's got... 
I mean, it, it shows how why Lex is the way he is, and it's amazing how Lex is so surprisingly together as you see that you know you're you're usually a product of your own environment and it's hard to fight that and and having a father like that and you haven't even heard the the last of it there's plenty left he's there there's so much there's so much to it and unfortunately i already watched the next episode and there's a lot that comes out but there's a part of the dynamic between lex and lionel that i find interesting that lex learns from his father how to unfortunately be like his father that's one of the things and how to be resilient the like Luther. Yeah. You know, because he's had so many women, so many people just want to see him fail, want to see your fail. And when, when you have that, you have nothing to lose and you don't care what people think at some point. And when you start not caring yeah. about what people think, there's a power in that. But it's well, also when you a stop, very. When you stop caring about people. Yes. I think that's the next one. It's okay to not care what people think. When you stop caring about people, that's when uh, it's slippery slope. But I also think it's important to care a little about what people think. Some people are like, I don't give a fuck. I'll just do I you know, and I think it's important to care about people and sort of have an idea of like, you know, propriety and, and doing the right thing. And anyway. Sure. Hey guys, Michael here from Bendigo in Australia. So Tom, did you feel that there was a uniquely strong chemistry between you and Sarah when acting? Like, come on, Alicia was so bubbly and sweet. She was featured in two more episodes, but is there a reason why she wasn't afforded a longer run? With her powers, a tag team superhero arc would have been so great. What do you guys think about that? Thanks guys, love the plug. No, I think you're right. I think her character, especially at the beginning, the bubbly and sweet and pretty and, you know, Clark, I see you for who you are. And and then her and I got along great on set. It was very easy. We had we did have great chemistry. It was fun to it was fun to to go to set together. Yes, it was. Or watching you go to set together. <laughs> Apparently. So we've only Apparently. had four questions about it. Hi, uh Ronnie from Jackson, Michigan. Just seeing uh Michael's performance. When he's talking to Lana, it's just phenomenal. Is it hard for you to perform so seriously, being such a happy go lucky guy, like a funny type guy? Thank you, Ronnie. I it's love called you. Act. Thanks, dude. Um, you know, it's actually easier for me to not be serious. It's easier for me to just be fun and just jump into something. Uh, I think, you know, it wasn't. I think sometimes it was difficult because you know it's like you're performing in front of people and the whole crew and other cast, and they know you is so goofy. So when you're doing it seriously, they're like, what is he doing? Oh, he's serious. Huh? <clears throat> but again, it's just about confidence and just, you know, sometimes I had more confidence than other days. Some days I was just getting by with knowing the lines and pretending that I, I was confident, but um, yeah. Anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll add this. If, if you and I both had, a nickel for every time Kristen just looked at either of us and went, we would be billionaires. Oh, yeah. Trillionaires. She's like, oh, And she, guys. even now when we see her at cons and you and I are like, ah, she's just like, oh, you guys. Things haven't, she just, you things know. haven't changed. Yeah. This is Monty. Hello, Monty. I hope your question's delightful. Monty. Ryan. Monty. Uh, it's Monty from Michigan. Have either of you had a crazy ex-girlfriend, and what can you share? Thank you. Uh, I won't talk about that, but hell yes. Uh, uh, I've, I've had wor I've had worse than a crazy ex-girlfriend, but I won't talk about that yeah, either. We're not going to get into it. <laughs> 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 Here we go, international folks. <laughs> Daniel, Michael, did you enjoy the horror elements of the scene where Alicia was chasing Lana with a knife? Yes, if the knife looked more realistic. Gene... C or G and C Clark grew up in a home full of verbal and physical affection. So why do you think he doesn't express this kind of affection towards his girlfriends? Well, because she's so in his face and overwhelming, I think he's, and he also has to be careful, right? Time you have to be careful with, you know, your powers and those things. Well, that's the funny thing about this is Clark finally gets what he wants. Someone who not only, you know, it, it accepts his powers and has powers, but now there's this whole other thing, which is why it's called obsession. This whole like laying it on really thick, really quick, taking over your locker, the whole thing. It's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Clark's like, he doesn't have a superpower to actually defend against that or yeah. to override that. This becomes an emotional situation. 
that's what I'd like to see in this episode is Clark sort of trying to navigate emotionally. Hmm. All right, now it's time for the Rose and Bomb rating system. You know, Ryan hasn't talked in a bit. Ryan? (laughs) (laughs) Oh. Mr. Ryan, to you. Mr. Uh, Ryan. Yeah, that's Mr. Ryan. Mr. Ryan. Uh, Let me guess what you're going to give it. No. Hold on. Let me think about this, honestly. I will give it 1.5. Wow. 1.5. 1.5. That's what I did. 1.5. Yeah. Same. Oh. Same. Yeah. You know, as charming you know? as it was some moments mm-hmm. and as, you know, you and Alicia and all that, that was fine. Uh, there was, I just didn't think it was great. I thought it was okay. I thought it was an okay episode. I thought she's got a, this secret. He's got a secret. She's too upset. They could have made her more likable and more believable by not being so psycho you could still be psycho remember a lot of people don't know they're they're bad or they're they have but but hold on hold on hold on hold on i disagree this she's there for one episode the episode's called obsession she has to make that turn it doesn't have to be called obsession that's where they went wrong it just could have been called alicia and little alicia oh that would have well then it's different yeah and then it would have been different. I just feel like it was like, oh, I scribbled out this and Lana. How am I going to get this guy if I'm like showing up to like there's so, but, something. I know she's crazy. I hate to use that but word. It's such a, but it's more from uh, from the Clark perspective, which is like, here is someone he can actually relate to who he's going to give more of himself to. He doesn't feel like he has to be as guarded with as he does with Lana because he feels like he has to protect her. So he's going to give a little more. And then in giving more, she gives too much back. It's like a. You know what I mean? Uh, like it's um, in that's, Clark's oh, openness, because, he sort of welcomes in. Um, so she was, she was, she was kind of like this before, but once she sees that Clark has abilities, she felt like her floodgates could open, so yeah. to speak. All right, be like, all right. Yeah. By the hey, way, let's, Obsession let's just, is a character in the comics who's oh. obsessed with Superman and stole artifacts that allow her to have similar powers. That's also cool. Oh, that's 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 cool. That, interesting. You know, kind of negates my comments. So, so you're gonna. So so, what's your rating there? <sighs> After I'm, I'm going to give it, I'm going to give it, I'll give it a rose because she was really appealing to look at. <laughs> I'll give it a rose, but not. Thank much. you. Thank you, Sarah Carter. Yeah. Thank you. Death and save count zero dead. Death and One save. Count. Clark saves Lana. Go figure. Through 14 episodes in season three, 15 dead, 23 saved. Series 74 dead, 93 saved. And now it's time for Ryan's favorite scene. He's written down three scenes, and we will choose his this is favorite a, scene. Favorite this is a strange scene. one. Just because of the episode itself, there's really no, I don't know. There's oh, really no standout. So, so far, it's Tom with two points, Michael with two, tied five times, and nobody got four. So this is, uh, oh. yeah. Oh, uh, I thought quick, I was this, behind for sure. Uh, I don't. This was not part of my favorite scene, but was this like the first time we saw people like walking to school in the snow? Or no? Am I insane? Probably I walking. In is the that snow. your favorite but, I don't know, scene? It, it struck me as interesting. Like you guys hadn't like actually like walked to school in the snow. It was like it felt like very uh, old school. Old school. I don't know why. That's cool. I don't remember that. Uh, also because I was just up there in in Vancouver. I was like, mm. how? That sounds like a, it looked pretty and it was like cool. Anyway. Uh, not part of this. Uh, okay, <laughs> scene one, uh, the cold open in the elevator. Uh, scene two, where she sneaks in Clark's bed. And scene three, the exploding paint can. You know what? Uh, I think, like, Ryan's, this is tough. What do you say, Tom? I picked last time. It's tough because you're, you're trying to you're trying to think what Ryan would like. And you're also A trying times to be he like, like. He likes the bigger picture of the Superman lore. He likes stunts. Yeah, and it so the, changes everything. Even time. though the paint can's in there, I think he's going to like seeing Clark being uncomfortable. Number two, the bed scene. That, I think that, you like. It, I say that the too. It's number two. And it, I, here's the yeah. thing I thought he was not going to say it because it sounds too pervy, but it's got to <laughs> yeah. be that scene. Oh my God. Yeah. We both got it. <laughs> we died once again. When was the last time any of us got late? <laughs> well, Ryan, like, Ryan likes to see <laughs> yeah, the characters seriously. out of their elements. So it's good. All right. That's it for this episode, folks. Uh, stick around next week as we come back to life 
with episode 15 of season three, Resurrection. Um, let us know your thoughts on the episode over on our socials at Talkville Podcast or at Talkville Pod. I don't know why he keeps saying that, but in the beginning he says Talkville Pod. Just go everywhere on that. But Bryce, you keep messing that up and you don't mess things up ever. Show us support for the podcast by joining Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N, patreon.com slash Talkville. We would love and welcome your support, and it really helps the podcast keep going. So if you want 10 seasons, you hopefully will join Patreon. Uh, if you want more yeah. information, go to at the Michael Rosenbaum and go to my link tree for any cons, cameo, all that stuff that Tom and I are doing. Yep. And uh, I'm back on the cameo. Thanks to you. Oh, back you're back on the, on cameo. the cameo. I just did. Just did five this weekend. Thank really? you to all of you. Nicely well, done. Now we're going to do a bunch of Zooms. Yeah. Enjoy. Yep. All right, guys. Remember, folks, always hold on to Smallville. All right. Last but not least, our lovable patrons, we love you. Um, thanks for joining. Patreon.com slash Talkville. And these are the top tiers who really give back. We loved hanging out with you in D.C. And we'll do that again sometime. Maybe like once a year or something. We'll uh, once every couple of years maybe <laughs> just kidding here we go nikki g leanne p raj c santiago m little lisa thomas leaf blower sophie m betsy d ray h ha, da, da. karen apple m danielle b 99 more leilani n brett g always hold on to smallville esteban g dj kento garrett w Camille l tom n jason w osama a lana rams with banana all right fine i Did got a lot it. of flack for that Nancy D from DC, uh, Brian G, Sarah W, Amanda R, Teddy127, Michael P, Theo M, Ryan R, and Jordan M. Hillary B, Randy B, Craig G. I kind of rhyme there. Hillary B, Randy B, Craig G, Christy R, Karen P, Jor L, Heather and Greg. Got to meet a lot nice of people. these folks there. Nico P, I made Smallville say butts. We met, met you too. too. Brian H, Eric K, Kristen B, Craig C, Nanine W. Stephanie K. Darth, Achilles, Finky, Tamra, H, Stephen F. Damn, who's that? Jeanette E, Deadvid, General Zod, Big D, Doug R. <laughs> I knew it. Carlos C, Tommy Z, Boston 68, Ken the Limerick guy, Coriel, he should write a limerick for us. Mr. Home Arcade, Amanda K, Jesse C, Claire M, D Brown, Karenira, M, Eldon Supremo, Leslie V, McBurts, Ginger Moose, Christopher S, Christoph S, I'm sorry, Michelle M. Drew, Brittany S, Marisol P, what up? Uh, Michael Kane doesn't blank. Mike Sebastian Kane F, doesn't blank. Sourpuss, Cranky Pants, Matthew and Lincoln B, Carol B, The Coopers. That's, yeah, that's, uh, you know, Sourpuss, Cranky Pants, Wolfie. Wolfie's hilarious. Oh my gosh. She was, uh, she was something else. Marion Louise L, CGO, Cindy C, Nikki L, Bish, Bash, Bosch's Lemon Pledge, Shannon, Fofan, and M, Brian S, Tina E, Matt R, Anthony R, Jess or Jen T, Jen, Jen, Jess D, Cassie B, Felicia R, Danny M, DS, the RN, JS, Rachel D, Gingerous Primus, and Nate Danger. Remember them at the uh, Smallville Nights? Yep. Gingerous Prime and Nate Danger, little Nate. When you're rich, you aren't crazy, you're eccentric. Paul W, Jonas One, Samantha S, Derek Smallville Podcast, Sage C, Spicy Brown says, Carrie A, we love you. We adore you. Thanks for making this possible. Blessings. Well, <laughs>